Hello everyone and thanks for viewing my video on the Russell Hobbs, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the RHEM2301B flatbed digital microwave. Now if you're anything like me, you like to do your research and have all your answers, all your questions answered. So hopefully in this video, I will try to answer as many of the questions that normally pop up when buying a microwave. I know that when I buy anything, I like to find out as much as I can about it. So first and foremost, this is the box that it comes in. And if I just zoom in a little bit, you can see that it says that it's a flatbed microwave. So there is no turntable to worry about with this microwave. Easy to use, yes it is. Easy to clean, yes it's easy to clean because there is no turntable to worry about. Sorry about that. Energy efficient LED light, yes. This is a microwave 800 watt power. You cannot change the power of this microwave, it is 100 watts all the time. Internally, you can see it says 23 litres volume. And right at the end there, you can see it says no clock. So if you're used to a microwave that has the digital clock on it, this one doesn't. So if you need that, then this microwave is not for you, but I would suggest just simply buying a wall clock if that's, if that's the case. So that's the box. I've already unpacked it. I've had it a couple of days. And um, first and foremost, I think what I'll do is, which a lot of people ask a lot of questions about is the external and internal dimensions. So let me just get this box out of the way. There's the microwave there. Okay, so hopefully if I start here, you'll see on the left hand side of the microwave, there are some vents. Going around to the front, it's a mirrored, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to be doing the dimensions. Let me do the dimensions first and then we'll come back to that. So let's push that over there a little bit more so you can see it better. Okay, so the depth of the microwave, and now there is a plastic protruding at the back there, which I don't know if you can see it, if I point to it there. I'm going to be measuring it from there because if you're butting it up to a wall, that's what's going to hit the wall. I'm not going to measure it from the actual top of the microwave. There is obviously also a lump there as well. I'm going to be measuring it from that plastic protrusion there, which is obviously where you need to be measuring it if you're in a tight space. So if I go from there, Okay, so if I do that in centimetres, that is approximately 39 centimetres. Let me see if I can show you that a little bit better. Okay, so that's to the plastic protrusion. Sorry for the shaky camera. As you can see, it is just under 39, but I would say 39 centimeters now that doesn't take into consideration the handle so if you bring it over here say 39 centimeters bear with me so i'll bring that over back to 39 and then you've got the handle as well you're probably looking at around 43 for the handle if you're looking to put it in a cupboard of some sorts so bear that in mind as well. So 39 for the body of the, of the microwave. And then with the handle, you're looking at, what did I say, 40, 43. So that's the depth of the microwave. Okay, so if we come to the width of the microwave, which is gonna be a lot easier to measure. Okay, so if I put that there. Come all the way along, bear with me. I would say that is approximately 50 centimetres, give and take. 
but then don't forget you need to allow so many centimeters each side for venting but that is the external dimensions of depth and width and now the height is oh there you go it's dead on 30 centimeters really okay so that's the height of the microwave so that's your external dimensions so let me see if i can move around a little bit so you can see what the internal dimensions are so if i can sort of bring that round hopefully you can see that let me see if you can okay all right so there you go so if i go for i'm not going to go right to the back of the inside i'm going to go to where the base is i think because that's where you're going to be obviously placing things so if i said from the back of the base to the front of the base i don't know if you can see that but that's i would say 39 centimeters because don't forget the door's got to shut the, no actual fact i think 30 because the door shuts flush with the side of that. So potentially 30, but I'll just be able to say so. I'll say that's 39 centimetres. No, sorry, excuse me, 29 centimetres. I beg your pardon, 29 centimetres to be on the safe side. Now, the width of it, if I can fit that in. Okay, so the width. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this easy. I'll have to do it from the outside there. This is a bit tricky, this one. So, bear with me. So, width. Again, I don't know if you can see that, but that's right to the edge. But then you have got those lumps protruding on the side of the microwave inside. So, again, I would say that's probably... 30 centimetres, 30 centimetres of the width. If I can put it there, I don't know if I can hold it there. No, it's not going to hold there, but it's, as you can see, that's roughly about 30 centimetres. If you look at the base. So 29 by 30 centimetres. Now the, the height is going to be see that but that's 20 centimeters that's the height internally it's 20 centimeters and that is about as, as high as you let you'll get with that that's pretty much it 20 centimeters okay so hopefully that's answered any of your dimension questions now there is one other thing you need to obviously depending on where you're going to house this microwave now Mine is not going to be on the worktop like this. Mine is actually going to be on a shelf. So I also needed to know what the dimensions of the feet are in comparison to the actual microwave. And as you can see, they don't come all the way to the edge of the microwave. So potentially you could get that in a more shallower shelf, but it does mean that the microwave is going to protrude slightly. So again, if I was to butt that up to a wall, So that's butted up to the wall. I get my tape measure and I measure from the wall. Let me see if I can get in like that. So hopefully you can see that. So there you go. So the foot, the forward. The front feet, should I say, you're looking, you, you're looking at least a 30 centimetre shelf that's putting it right onto the edge. So to be on the safe side, you probably want it at least at least 32 centimetres, the depth of the shelf. And then your feet will fit on that perfectly, as you can see. And then obviously, how much is it going to protrude? So if you look at it from the front edge of that, 
it's going to protrude roughly where are we? Sorry, it's a bit fiddly. There you go. So that's roughly around the front edge. So it's going to protrude approximately eight centimetres. But really, in truth, if you can get it to fit on the shelf, and you've got a shelf, you really want a shelf of 38, and that would be pretty much flush with the shelf. Okay, and don't think much people are going to be worried about the actual width of the legs, but if I can try to get that in there. Oops. Okay, so let's get that in first. So you're looking. It's a bit fiddly. You're looking around 34, 34 centimeters to the width of the legs. Okay, hopefully that's helped you with the dimensions. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the vents. The vents, there's one on the left hand side of the microwave. And obviously, this is the back of the microwave, which has the few vents at the back there. Okay, I don't believe there's any on the right hand side, but let me just double check. No, so there's nothing on the right hand side, so you, you'll find that side. Okay. So I am gonna put that on a shelf myself. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to plug it in. Okay, and there you go, it comes up. Now there is a film on here, which I haven't taken off yet. Uh, it does say, please remove protective cover prior to use. But what I like to do is make sure that it's working fine for at least a week, and then I'll take that off. Just in case if it isn't, or it's damaged or whatever, it's not working right, I can send it back in virtually the same state that it came to me. Also, it, there's a sticker here at the front, which obviously you would take that off as well. Again, I've left that on for a little while. Um, other than that, I don't believe there was anything internally inside. So let me show you what, what it looks like inside. So as it obviously suggests, it is a flatbed. Now they do give you a ring where I suppose you really should put everything as central as you can in there. So that's what it looks like. Now there are some, some little lumps here. I don't know how to describe them. One, two, three, four, and the same on this side. I mean, if it was an oven, I'd be thinking you can kind of put some shelves here, but I've never heard of any microwave shelves. Has the diamond effect at the back, which is supposed to distribute the microwaves slightly better. Um, obviously there's no grill, so there's nothing on top. now. As you can see, there is an LED light there. Um, it is a bit of a tinty, like a yellowy tint to it. Now, which well, I thought that wasn't gonna be very good when I started using the microwave, but in actual fact, it's, it's not bad at all. It does show what's inside really well. And I'll, and I'll show you that once I start operating it. So let me just quickly go through with what the, the buttons do. So the microwave is simply, let me close the door. And let, let me just say that opening and closing the door is an absolute doddle. It's not too tight that it pulls the microwave and you just push it back and one finger. So that, that's not an issue. It's not too tight. It doesn't make the microwave move back or forth that it's too too hard. Because some microwaves, when you try to, try to open it, you move the whole microwave with it, but no, not with this one. Okay, so as it says, it's an easy, and I like the way they spelt it, easy flatbed digital microwave. Only four, can you see that? Four buttons. That's all you get. There's no fancy menus with this one. So if you're looking for fancy menus, this is not for you. This is simplicity. This is what most people use microwaves for and nothing else. You can see it is a mirror finish. Um, it doesn't really, I mean, I'm, 
it doesn't really show fingerprints, which I was quite amazed at actually, because I was thinking it was going to show fingerprints, but it doesn't show fingerprints, so that's good. Okay, so going back to the four buttons, you've got the top one, simple, microwave, defrost, stop, cancel, and start. Okay, let me just turn it around this way. What I'm going to do is, let's get something to put in there, so just bear with me while I get something. So let's just get a mug of water. Okay, so I'm going to place a mug of water in there. I'll put it in a minute. Close it. Okay. So the light is off at the minute, but don't worry, it will come on when it starts operating. Let me just push that back a little bit more, so hopefully you can see that a bit better. A bit more as well. Okay, there you go, so now you can see that. Okay, so to microwave, you press the microwave button and it will go up in increments of 30 seconds. There is no 10 seconds, it's either 30 seconds and when it gets, I think, to five minutes, it goes up in increments of a minute. Now, let me just stop that and cancel that. If you if you wanted to microwave something for three minutes, you don't have to do six presses. Okay? You don't have to do that. But it's, it's quite easy to do. But if you just press and hold, it will go up itself. So press, hold, and there you go. When you get to what, whatever you want, you stop it. So again, it's quite simple. If you want the 30 second, 30 second increments, just press it once. But if you are looking to go five, 10, 15 minutes, you can just hold the button down. So let me show you again. If I hold it down, and then just, did you see when it got to five minutes, it starts going up in increments of a minute, okay? So again, so I'll stop that. So if I put it on for 30 seconds now, which is going to be one click, and then all I do is start. And hopefully you can see, I mean, it's really difficult to see here at the minute, but I mean, obviously there's lighting in the back end, it's quite reflective. I'll turn that light off actually. There you go. You can see what's in there surprisingly. Surprisingly really well. Um, probably slightly better than my old microwave. Now, it, it is a bit unusual not to see anything turning round. Um, that's gonna take a little bit of getting used to because you always think that it's gonna be turning round, but it's not. So there you go, it stopped. Beeps five times, the light goes off, but once you open the door, the light comes on again. And there you go. Pretty, pretty warm. It's not boiling, that's, but that's only 30 seconds. So there you go, so that's quite simple to microwave. So again, it's just a case of putting it in. Right, so if defrost, it's the same thing. Let's get that there like that. Hopefully you can see that. Defrost, again, it just goes up in 30. It's exactly the same as the, as the microwave. And then just start and the light comes on. And hopefully you can see that it's visually, it's not bad at all. Um, even with a mirror finished door. Okay, so if I stop that. Oops, sorry, where am I? Stop here, sorry. So stop. Well, actually that's, that's, that's stop here. If I start again. Just starts counting down again. Now, if you want to cancel it, you press it twice and it'll go back to zero. And I don't think it will, well, I've not tried it yet, but let's try it. I don't think you can start it by just pressing start. I might be wrong. This, this is the first for me as well, but it's worth knowing if it does or not. No. It doesn't do it because it doesn't know what you want it to do. It doesn't know if you want it to microwave, actually heat something up or defrost it. So it's gotta be one of the two at the top. So yeah, so microwave, 
start. It knows what you want to do then. And then stop. Cancel it. So there you go. It's really, really simple. It really is that simple. Now, obviously the other benefits of having a flatbed is if you have any spillages, it's so easy to clean. And the other benefit, which I'm going to show you now, is if you used to have, say for instance, a Pyrex dish or something. And let me show you, I've got one here. So a Pyrex dish, excuse me that it's got all the watermarks on it. It is clean, just got a load of watermarks on it. So you wouldn't be able to do this with a normal microwave unless it was a bloody big one. So Pyrex dish fits in there, perfect. No issues. If that had a turntable, now this is a 23 litre this is, so this would have a fairly decent sized turntable if that was a normal turntable type of microwave. You'd put that in there, fine like that, but when you start turning it on and the turntable turns, watch, it wouldn't go any further because it would hit the sides. So there you go. So that's one of the real benefits of a flatbed. I can even put it in the other way as well. And I'll give you the dimensions of this Pyrex dish just to give you an idea. Fits in there perfect. Okay, so let me give you the dimensions of this Pyrex dish. Okay, and I'm coming down here a little bit so you can see it. So, that's, as you can see, approximately 28 centimetres. And that way. Oops, right, let's just get that like that so you can see it like that. That's about 20, just under 23, 23 centimetres. Obviously the height doesn't matter, it's the, the width and the, and the length of it really. So that is one of the big, big benefits of a flatbed, is that you can put Pyrex dishes in. Like I said, easy peasy. No need to worry about it not turning around. So that would get stuck like that and the turntable would just go around underneath it. Oh, it'd be an absolute pain. So there you go, that's that. Um, what else do you need to know? I think really I've covered everything most people would need to know. As I said before, it is an 800 watt. So bear that in mind if you want something a bit higher. And it is only an 800 watt. You cannot change the settings on that. You can't give it, you can't make it six, 700, 900, it's 800 watts. Okay. Lovely, lovely microwave. I mean, so far, so good. Had no issues with it. Um, I'm gonna show you now where I would normally, where I have housed it and where it's gonna live for the next God knows how long. Um, so I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll show you where I've got it and on the shelf and how much room there is. Okay. Okay, one thing I did forget is to give you the length of the lead. Um, some people might need to know that. So it's gonna be hard to show you this, but you have to trust me that I am measuring the whole length of this lead from the back of the microwave. So the length of the lead is, I would say it is 100 centimetres. That's not including the plug. That's just the lead itself. Okay, so that's 100 centimetres. So, so not, not this thing, it's, it's 100 anyway. It's 100 centimetres from the rear of the microwave let me show you where I mean to here on the plug. 
100 centimeters. So I'm, I'm not including the actual plug itself. Okay, just the lead, 100 centimeters. Okay, as promised, this is where I've got it on the shelf. As you can see, the feet are just on the shelf nicely. My shelf is, and I'll show you that. is 35 centimeters so my shelf is 35 centimeters deep and that fits on just nice and as you can see it is a mirrored finish I'm not going to go and stand in front of it but you can use it as a mirror as well as a bonus um, so you can look good while you're <laughs> microwaving your food okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take pictures of the booklet so then the guide itself so you can have a little read of it yourself and you can stop it whenever you like okay so that's the front page of it and it's also fairly decent text on it as well which is quite good let me just move that around a bit so you can see that a bit better I'll get some light on it well, you're gonna have to bear with me because this is a bit shaky now so hopefully i'll leave it long enough you should be able to stop the video and you can have a little read okay It's the usual instructions, but it's still nice. As you can see there, it says, I'll go down there. A minimum clearance of 7.5 centimeters is required between the oven and any adjacent walls. Leave a minimum clearance of 30 centimeters above the oven. Um, I don't know how many people adhere to that. I suppose you should, but I know many, many people, including myself, that don't adhere to those measurements. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. You should if you can. And bear that in mind when buying this. I believe that's like any microwave. You need to have some sort of clearance at the top and at the sides. This is just your usual bumps that you get with any electrical item, really. Hopefully you can see that. Just something else to bear in mind on page 13 if you are putting it on a shelf the weight of this microwave i wouldn't say it's as heavy as some of the microwaves i've seen in the shops but it's 13.3 kilos it is quite heavy um a lot heavier than my old microwave so make sure if you are putting it on a shelf that your shelf is man enough to take that weight and all the weight is on the right hand side of the microwave so when looking at the microwave here, it's all the gubbins on this side where the weight is. Fairly light this side. All the weight is on the right hand side. So bear that in mind that you've got a decent enough shelf that's gonna take that. Okay. There you go, that just gives you Product overview, that's page 14, page 15, microwave installation. Okay, so there you go there, really. 
So it says the microwave oven should be used freestanding only, not built in or used in the cabinet. So again, if you're thinking of doing that, this microwave is not for you. Okay. That's on page 15. And there you go, there's the microwave installations. Page 16, the minimum installation height is 85 centimeters. Minimum clearance is 7.5. Leave minimum clearance of 30 centimeters above the oven. There. Do not install the oven over a cooker or other heat or steam producing the appliance. And that's sort of giving you how it should be installed and what sort of clearances you need to have. And then page 17 is the control panel. to use the microwave oops sorry how to use the microwave and there you go the note there which I've mentioned in the video the cooking time increases by 30 seconds until five minutes and then it increases by one minute until it hits the 60 minutes. During the program, simply press the microwave button to add 30 seconds or more. And then it's just how to use the microwave. How to use a microwave. There's not really a lot to know, really. There's only four buttons. Um, really, really simple microwave to use. But please bear in mind if you are looking to put it in a cupboard, it's not going to be any good. Right, how to use a microwave. Utensils information. I think most people know now not to put metal in a microwave, but. You never know, but there you go. Do not use paper covered wire twist ties on plastic bags. So these are things like that, I suppose, some people are not sure of, but there you go. That gives you a rough guide of what not to put in a microwave. Cooking tips, I'm not gonna go through that. Um, well, there you go, I'll do it quick and you can look, say you can pause Pause the video if you want to pause the video. And then clean in the microwave, which is, I think, pretty straightforward. Problem solving, I'm not gonna bother with all that. Problem solving, guaranteeing customers. This product, Guaranteed for 12 months from the date of original purchase. The following thing is the product must be returned to the retailer with the original proof of purchase. Right. Hopefully, they have no need to do this. The product must be installed and used in accordance with the instructions. Domestic use only, so if you are and use it industrially in the kitchen. This is not for you. This warranty does not cover wear and tear, damage, misuse or consumable parts. So 
wear and tear so i don't know how long that would take for you to claim something on wear and tear surely if, if it um, started peeling or something went wrong in six months you could still take that back or send it back should i say connections connections not gonna bother with that and then it's just notes so there you go so there you go there's there's the review on the russell hobbs flatbed microwave hopefully that answers all your questions um again i'll just tell you what the model number was um can't remember where i bought this one from but the model number is there you go so that's the microwave and the model number was rhem 2301b russell hobbs flatbed family size microwave well i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope it answers all your questions i know that um if i had something to look at this video similar to this video and hopefully that that would have made my decision a long long time ago but yeah there you go hopefully you've enjoyed it thanks for watching bye